in this video, we're going to talk about calculating changes in internal energy. So if you haven't yet watched my video on the first law of thermodynamics and energy transfer, go ahead and check that out first before watching this one, because we're going to use concepts developed there to be able to solve some problems using the equation you see here on the screen. What we're really doing here is we're using this equation, which is the first law of thermodynamics, to calculate how much a system changes in energy. And so that's what this stands for here. This delta E stands for change in internal energy. And how much a system changes in energy depends on Q, which is the heat flow in and out, and W, which is the work done on or by the system. So if we combine the changes in heat and the changes in work, what we get is the change in internal energy. So here is a table that shows you the signs that Q or W will have depending on what types of processes are going on. And we'll go through these examples real fast and then we'll do a few problems. So if work is done on a system, and the system is just whatever we're interested in, if work is done on a system, that's said to have a positive change. So for example, if I lift up a weight, I'm doing work and I'm increasing the energy of that weight, namely the gravitational potential energy. So if I lift up a weight, that's doing work on a system and that's increasing its energy. On the other hand, if I work is done by a system, that decreases its energy. So an example here would be dropping a weight. I can drop that weight and that is work done by the system. That weight is gonna drop and it's gonna reduce the energy of that weight and it's going to transfer that energy to the floor which is basically the surroundings now you can also have energy transfers by heat which we abbreviate as q and if you put heat into the system we call that a positive change in internal energy because you're increasing how much energy that system has so an example there would be heating a balloon if i add heat to a balloon i'm increasing the energy that balloon has on the other hand you could have heat flow from a system and an example there would be wood burning. If I burn wood, the energy contained there in that system, which is wood, is decreasing. And so we call that a negative change. So we're going to take a look at a few problems here that will use this equation to calculate change in internal energy. And the main challenge for these problems is identifying is Q positive or negative and is W positive or negative. So here we have the first problem. It says a basketball is pumped up while sitting in the sun. And 325 joules of work is done pumping up the ball, and 12 joules of heat is absorbed by the ball, and we want to know the change in internal energy. So I've broken down this problem into three steps, and the very first steps we're going to do is just identify the heat and work magnitude. And by magnitude, I mean how big they are, but not yet their sign. So we're going to identify the numbers associated with heat and work, but we're not going to identify if they're positive or negative. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look for Q in our problem, and we're going to look for W in our problem. We're going to figure out what those are. And you can see here that the first thing listed is that there's 325 joules of work. And so we're not going to worry about the sign yet. We're just going to say, oh, there's 325 joules of work done by or on the system, and we're not going to worry about the sign yet. So I'm going to write down 325 joules. And I'm going to leave a space here where I'm going to go back and fill in the sign. And now we want to identify the heat change. And you can see it says that 12 joules of heat is absorbed by the ball. So that's 12 joules there. So our Q is equal to 12 joules. So that's step one, where we've just identified the magnitude of our heat and work. Now, the next step, and the hardest step, is determine the signs of our heat and work. So now we have to decide, did each of these processes increase the internal energy of our ball or decrease it? Well, we pumped that ball up. We're doing work on the ball. And indeed, it says 325 joules of work is done pumping up the ball. So we're working on the system. And since we're working on the system, if we go over to our chart here, whenever we do work on the system, that has a positive change. So our work is positive, and I'm going to put a positive sign. Now, normally, you don't put a positive sign in front of a number that's positive. But I think it's useful in these problems to actually explicitly write the positive sign so that you can remember you've thought about it and decided it's positive. Now let's look at the change in heat. It says in our problem that 12 joules of heat is absorbed by the ball. It also tells you that it's sitting in the sun. So our ball is gaining energy from the sun, and it's gaining 12 joules. That makes the Q also positive. And now what we're going to do is the easiest part. We're going to plug that into our equation. So the hardest step there is figuring out is Q positive or negative, and is W positive or negative. And now we plug it into our equation, which says that delta E is equal to Q plus W. 
And since both of these are positive, we're just going to say it's equal to 12 joules, which is our heat, plus 325 joules, which is our work. And when we add those together, we get 337 joules for our change in internal energy. So our change in internal energy is 337 joules for this problem. We're going to do two more problems. And this one was stated with a basketball being pumped up. And it clearly tells you information about what's going on with that system in a very concrete way. It's a ball. But lots of times, the way textbooks award problems is more like this. They'll just say 118 joules of work is done by a system while it gains 316 joules of heat. What is the change in internal energy? So there we don't have any clues about the Paul being pumped up or the sun, and we just have to go based off of the words that list in the problem to understand whether our heat and work are positive or negative. So again, we're going to follow this list of steps. First, we're going to identify the magnitude of heat and work. And so we're going to look for Q, and we're going to look for W. And you can see our problem says that there's 118 joules of work. So we know the magnitude of our work is 118 joules. So I'm just going to write 118 joules, again, leaving a space to fill in that sign later. It also tells us that there's 316 joules of heat. So I'm just going to put 316 joules here. Now, step two, and the hardest step, determine the signs of heat and work. So it tells us 118 joules of work is done by a system. And so since it's done by the system, we can go over to our table and it tells us work done by a system is negative. And so that tells us this work contribution is actually negative and I'm gonna write a negative sign there. Now, we wanna figure out what is going on with the heat. And it tells us the system gains 316 joules of heat. And so that's heat flow to the system. The, heat is, the system is gaining heat. And when heat flows to the system, that sign is positive. So that means we have a positive Q and a negative W. So again, the step three, the easy step, we're just gonna plug that into our equation. And we're gonna say that the change in internal energy of our system is equal to Q plus W. And our Q is positive, so we just write positive 316. But our work is actually negative. And that means we're gonna write plus, because that's in the equation. But when we plug in our work, I'll write it in parentheses, and that's actually negative. Now, if you prefer to leave off the parentheses and just write 316 minus 118, that's also fine. But this shows you what we're doing is we're plugging in a value for W, and it's negative. And so if I take 316 joules and I subtract 118, I get 198 joules as my change in internal energy. So what this tells me is overall, even though my system is doing some work, and that's decreasing its internal energy, it's gaining heat that more than compensates for it. So we increase the system's energy by 198 joules. Okay, one more sample problem. Again, worded in a way that a textbook might do it. It says 125 joules of heat is transferred to the surroundings, while a system does 115 joules of work. What is the change in internal energy? Again, we're gonna follow our three steps. We're first gonna identify Q and W in terms of their magnitude, but not worry about their signs. And we can see that it says there's 125 joules of heat. So we'll just write 125. And we'll leave a space there to come back and fill in the sign. And now for work, it says there's 115 joules of work. And so again, we'll write 115, but we'll leave a space to come back and fill in the sign. So that's step one. Now we go to step two. We have to decide what's going on. It says 125 joules of heat is transferred to the surroundings. And remember, in these problems, we only have two things. We have the system, what we're interested in, and the surroundings, everything else. And so since that heat is transferred to the surroundings, that means it's coming from the system. So heat is lost from the system. And that means if we go over our chart, we can see that where we are is that heat is flowing from the system to the surroundings. And that means we have a negative sign for our heat. Now let's look at the sign for work. It says the system does 115 joules of work. So it's the system doing the work. And so that means what we're looking at is work done by the system, which also is a negative change. So we have a negative Q and a negative W. Hopefully this makes sense. If we have the system giving up heat to the surroundings, that's gonna decrease its internal energy. If we have the system doing work, that's gonna decrease how much energy is there. And so both of those are negative, and when I plug them into my delta E equals Q plus W equation, 
then I'm going to plug in negative 125 for my Q. And I'm going to plug in negative 115 for my work. And when I go ahead and add those two negative numbers up, I'm going to get negative 240 joules for my change in internal energy. That's a negative number. What does that mean? That means that the total energy in my system has decreased in this problem. That it has a lower capacity to do work or transfer energy from it now than it did before the problem began. And it's no problem getting a negative change in internal energy. That just means overall our system lost energy. And that's fine. So, thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions about determining these uh, signs on Q&W, please leave them below. You can also subscribe to receive updates about future videos.